What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Alex, if you guys are new here, right now we're working some DTF printer problems. DTF printer one, number one is down and DTF printer number two is down. And we're just working these issues, trying to get them up for the rush order that just came in actually like 50 minutes ago. It's uh, one o'clock now and the rush order came in a little bit before noon. So we got to get that order printed today and make sure that it gets out because that customer paid extra. So let's figure out what's going on with these DTF printers. All right, so this one, we're working a couple of issues. Number Issue number one, this color, if, for those of you who know, this like teal cyan color, not cyan, it's a lot lighter, it's like a teal, uh, mint kind of, man, this color is a hard one to print because you need basically perfect nozzles every single time for the entire duration of the print in all channels. You can't have any um, like notches missing from the uh, nozzle check. So those of you who do have run DTF printers, I'm sure you guys have a pretty uh, big, like you guys despise this color. I know that I sure do. So uh, we're trying to make sure that we can get the nozzles in absolute perfect, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, just basically perfect. So um, as you can see, this last one that we ran looks actually very, very close to perfect. Um, the one before it, we we're having this one slight issue with the magenta. And on most designs, honestly, you could probably get away with something like that. But when you have to make this color, man, like I said, you need absolutely perfect nozzle checks. So that's issue number one that we're working. Issue number two um, is a pretty slight issue, but here at AMS Transfers, we obviously like to make sure that we are providing like only the highest quality transfers that we can. And if you can tell here, the very top of the design, there's a little bit of outline here. And that would typically be okay. Like that's pretty normal for the stroke settings that we do on our prints. However, if we go here and look at the bottom, we do not see that same outline. So what that tells me is that the printer is out of registration. That means that it's not lining up the white layer on top of the color layer perfectly. And what we have to do is try and run these checks with the printer, they're called print adjusts, to actually go ahead and diagnose the problem and figure it out. Here you can actually, uh, not sure if you'll be able to make it out on camera, but we were running a bunch of those print adjust tests earlier to try and get the registration figured out. So we're gonna run uh, another one here right now, see what the status is and see what we need to do as a next step. Scratch that, Michaela actually decided to give the print another try. So we're going to see what we're working with this time. Uh, first impressions, the banding, oh, it's really hard to tell. It's hard to tell because we have... Like, yeah, Michaela was saying that it's hard to tell because there's like some dirtiness under the film. But from what it looks like, on my end at least, it looks like we might be in the clear on the banding. As for the registration, we are still seeing some peeking out at the top. Now again, if this happens at the bottom too, that's okay. So, so long as it's symmetrical, it's peeking out at the bottom and the top, that's fine. Um, we just don't want it to only happen on one side. That means that something's out of alignment. All right, so this one, unfortunately, we are still having the same issue. It is even worse than the one that I showed you guys before. We got a pretty good amount coming out the top of the color layer and on the bottom, nothing but white. So we're gonna cancel this guy. Uh, Michaela and I were just talking off camera. We don't actually think that what is happening is a, like a DTF software problem. We're kind of right now at this moment thinking that it might be a digital factory problem because the other day we had digital factory crash and then when we restarted it again, it basically like prompted us to set up a new printer. Um, so that was a little bit weird. And I'm just kind of thinking like what has changed, what variables have changed on the printer settings, on the settings that we use in general over the past couple of days. And that is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. I'll have to talk to Michaela to confirm because she's been the one actually running the DTF printers, but I don't know. So that's a place where we're gonna start, see what uh, the results are with checking the settings on Digital Factor. All right, so we're just kind of experimenting right now. We have a working theory that we're trying to test, and that's that the stroke settings are, aren't, are the, what it's called in Digital Factory is the white choke settings, for some reason are not getting picked up. We normally run it on 10, which Digital Factory says is the maximum, but we just moved it up to 15 to just like see, give it like, get some sort of like indicator on progress. Should we still go up or should we go down? Whatever, try and just figure things out, man. Um, and it maybe seems like we're getting some progress, 
because it might be hard to tell on camera, but there's a little bit on the left and right side of the actual color peeking out symmetrically. However, I still think we actually might have screwed up the registration on the up and down because I do think that this is actually a digital or like a Hansa soft problem rather than digital factory. So what we might end up doing is trying to revert back to the original settings on the DTF printer. Right now, Michael is just checking to see if you can see any of the white outline. What do we got? The sides are fine. Now Michaela, it's the registration. Just said that the sides are fine. So now we're just really working on the up and down, but I still don't know entirely what's going on with Digital Factory. 15, uh, we've never had to run uh, Choke the White setting 15. I looked at the artwork because I thought maybe there was some like um, pixelated edges on the sides of the design that were actually getting picked up by Digital Factory and it was thinking to put white there, but it actually looked pretty good. It was 300 DPI from the customer, so I don't know, it definitely wasn't that. Okay, so Michaela, if you guys didn't hear that, she said that she went back to our original settings on Hanso Soft, and we're going to try running it with the 15 choke on Digital Factory. So, just started that up. Let's see how it does. The original settings are here. Michaela just said a good point. So we did run a test print earlier, and the original settings down. Uh, it's actually in the dryer. I can't show it to you. Uh, but we ran one of our like normal files that we do test prints on to make sure everything's in registration, and that file turned out fine. It was really only when we started messing with the new file that we had ripped, because the file that we normally run as a test, that was ripped forever ago. So the new files that we ripped today, we're thinking maybe has an issue with Digital Factory, like I said, when it crashed earlier. So I don't know, guys. We're just, we're just trying to figure this out. Stay with us. Stick around. Maybe this will help you guys if you ever run into this problem. I sure hope not, but I don't know, maybe. Right as I just turned off the clip, Michaela just said, I think we're good. So let's go take a look, see what we got. All right, top registration, looking good. As you can see right here. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. E, yeah. So here on the E, it's already printed it, and it's just, there. it does appear that there's a tad more on the top, but we still have some on the bottom, so not perfect symmetry, but it's good enough to where it won't be noticeable once you press it onto the garment. So, man guys, I don't wanna say that we're in the clear yet. I don't wanna jinx it, but let's see what we got. All right, so we're gonna let that run. Uh, give it a little bit more time so that we can check underneath the film and see if there's any banding so that we can hopefully check both of the problems as resolved. But I wanted to show you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, as you guys know, we started selling blanks on amstransfers.com. So now you can order your blanks along with your transfers and just pay one easy shipping fee. You don't have to now pay for your shipping fee for the transfers and for your t-shirts. You could just pay one. Um, so I had to run over to Aviva because we didn't have any of these t-shirts in stock. Um, so I ran over to Aviva Wholesale. It's one of the local wholesale suppliers in the area and grabbed these uh, three Dark Heather um, 18600 hoodies. They're the Gildan Heavy Cotton hoodies. So we're going to get these guys uh, shipped out with the transfers. And um, yeah, I really have been pretty happy with how things have been going with the blanks on amstransfers.com. I just think that I don't think we'll be able to do it here, but I think that we're probably going to need to uh, bring the blanks in house or at least like figure something else out because I just don't feel like it's been working the best with the most effective solutions for our customers the way we're currently figuring it out. So we might be doing that in the future, bringing a whole bunch of t-shirts in uh, like in stock here at AMS Transfers headquarters, but. Testing, testing. Okay, you're gonna have to cut that out. All right, so guys, I wanted to get Alex's reaction to this because I think I solved a printer or I think I solved the problem for printer number two. Again, big emphasis on think. I'm seeing if he can figure it out right now. Um, so if he doesn't, okay, this printer is all up and good too. So that was the solution for that. If he hasn't told you anything about this printer this week, this printer for the past week has been giving me the biggest headaches there are clogs nonstop. It's only in the cyan. So there's nothing, like it's not any of the other colors. I flushed it. I've used uh, some heavy duty clog debuster or deep whatever. 
And then I was putting the clog buster in and I noticed something. Then I checked this printer and it did not have it. So I want to see if you can figure it out. And I'll tell you, yeah, I'll tell you if you're close or not. Why are you so close? Okay, well, I was a little worried because you have the yeah, Allen wrenches out. That's kind of concerning. It's only the side. Okay, so that gave me a way on where it's located, having that. I was trying to zoom in for you guys so you can tell what it I think you see it. What, all the stuff on the side? Yeah. That's all flew east. So right here, there's a puddle of blue ink. Only blue. If you go to that printer, there's nothing there. So my theory is, something is disconnected in this, like a tube or something. So every time I clean it, it's pushing blue ink out onto there instead of through it. Because it's not over there. And that's only blue ink puddle. Click this. What do you think? I don't know. Hence why that is that. Because I'm going to take it off and see. I don't think that's it. Because if there was a line disconnected, we would be having a lot bigger problems than just one little notch being taken out. Not if it's just the blue. If the blue's wiggled. Yeah, I, I get it. But look, the blue's printing pretty well, except for this one part. I think it's just the nozzle. And it's directly across. I think it's just the nozzle clog. I don't think so. Why is there a huge puddle? Clearly blue ink is coming through. It's just going on to that thing. Because we've been running so many head cleanings. We, we ran the same amount of head cleanings on both printers today, and there was not one claw, or there was not one puddle of any ink on that. So what are you suggesting? That we take that black box off and see if everything's connected. <laughs> if you want to. I do not think that's what it is. All right, guys. So we just uh, tried to give the printhead um, cap, I guess, capping station uh, clean. And we got this big piece of dried ink from the actual CMYK one. So my theory is that this big chunk of ink was causing the capping station not to make full contact with the printhead resulting in this nasty clog that we're dealing with right now. Um, so the problem is that my solution doesn't actually fix it because we still have the nasty clog, but at least we found what is causing the nasty clog, at least in my theory. All right, so Mikaela's gonna be trying her theory. She wants to uh, take the head or the cap off of the print head and um, check to see if the, I guess, dampers are fully seated. Every single one of your followers has people tell their wives they're right. They're women supporters. Can you check the thing on that, the powder on that? Okay, I asked if I could check the powder. All right, for now, probably have a few more minutes before we need to top it up. It's good to see that DTI printer number one is still going strong though. She's got the print heads open. So now what's the game plan, Michaela? <laughs> Think that if you guys didn't hear, she said she didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> Where would the clog be? In the nozzles of the print head. There is a puddle here. She is stuck on that puddle. And I told her about that, but then also okay, look at the white, guys. Head. There's a whole okay, bunch of white there as well. Look at the white on that printer and the uh, color on that printer. There's nothing there. Stop it. <laughs> Oh boy, guys, she took the damper off. It's not that bad. Did it confirm your hypothesis? Can we clean it with this thing off? All right, so we ran the uh, head cleaning again, ran another nozzle check. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to tell, but Still dealing with that nasty clog. Uh, so we're just getting the cover put back on the print heads and we're not trying to diagnose the nozzle clog and that's going to be the 
the problem that we're working. Um, I think we're now convinced that the dampers aren't any of the problem and we're just dealing with one of those nasty clogs right now. Alright guys, not sure what happened with my audio, but here I am trying to get my watch in focus to show you guys the time. Uh, it was not working very well, but the time was 4.39. We had, uh, it's just had enough for the day, honestly. So, um, DTF printer number two, we never got working. We just filled up the capping station as high as we could with, um, capping solution. This might cause a problem where the ink or the capping solution will go into the lines of the printer, but honestly, at this point, we don't know what else to do. We got to get that clog out somehow or another. Um, so I was just telling you guys here that I got the uh, transfers all packaged up for the day. DTF printer number one came in clutch. Good thing because if we didn't have DTF printer number one, we would not have been able to get that rush order out because DTF printer number two was having a day. I also got a screen printing order printed, which is what I am going over to show you guys right now. Um, it was a puff screen printing order and I do not like printing puff screen printing orders. So it was not the most fun way to spend the rest of my afternoon after an already pretty stressful morning. But um, we ended up getting everything done for the day. The puff screen printing order, the rush order, everything ended up working out at the end. If you guys did enjoy the video, it's just kind of like a more raw, unfiltered day in the life of uh, running a DTF business. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Leave a like down below if you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video.